I love going to art museums to seek inspiration from the different styles and stories of the artists. And so, after my conference in Cleveland, Ohio recently, I took an extra day to see this beautiful site of the Cleveland Art Museum. I took the train and headed off to the museum, which is located near Case Western Reserve University. So, in this video, I'll be going over my five favorite artworks from the museum and why I think they are worth seeing. This is a painting of a woman standing next to a window in what appears to be an empty room. She is a laundress ironing a garment, while a sliver of light illuminates the side of her face. Her portrait is part of a collection of women ironing or sewing. Edward Violard, the painter, was inspired to make paintings like this because he watched his mother and sister making corsets and dresses in their crowded apartment. The French artist painted this in 18... 92 using oil and board. I really love this painting because of its simplicity and how it captures the translucence of the light in the background. It reveals women in society which often don't play a central role in stories and puts them center stage. Yolard frequently painted interior scenes, usually of women in a workplace, at home or in a garden. The women's faces and features are rarely the center of attention. The paintings were dominated by the bold pattern of the costumes, the wallpaper, carpets, furnishings, but this one is pretty somber. The next painting that I loved is called The Power of Music, and it was painted in 1847 as an oil painting on canvas. It's set in rural Long Island before the Civil War. The painting captures a black laborer listening intently to a fiddle tune enjoyed by white men. Although they are both listening to the two music, their separation, with the white men sitting inside and the black man ex excluded and standing outside, is representative of the, the sharp racial divisions in America at the time. So this painting is one of a handful in the whole museum that features anyone but black, which is odd given the history of slavery in this part of the country. The painter, William Sidney Mount, painted this in 1847 as an oil on canvas. The way that this painting displayed African Americans with empathy is what actually distinguished him from his fellow American artists at the time. While many of his contemporaries depicted African Americans as caricatures, Mount's characters had natural grace and dignity. His work was a step up from the one-sided cartoon figures that became the stock and trade of artists and firms like Courier and Ives. The Mal's treatment of the subjects is empathetic as he composes the scenes such that the main protagonist is an outsider, so to speak an African-American who is shown as contemplative and has an intelligent presence. The third painting is by Thomas Eakin called The Beglin Brothers Turning the Stake. So Thomas Eakin's painting celebrates the athletic teamwork while commemorating an actual event, a famous rowing race in 1872. In this painting, throngs of spectators line the riverbank and watch as Barney and Joe Biglin negotiate the tricky turn around a stake marking the halfway point in a contest. Their, con their competitors lag behind them and the two famous oarsmen won the race. This painting really struck me because I've always wanted to do some sort of uh, painting that captures the beauty of a sport the way that Eakin does. Eakin captures the light and body movement of the sportsman in such a realistic manner. Uh, in addition to the way that he captures the bodies, he also captures the translucence of the water and the movement of the figures in the water so, so well. I loved his style and technique for this whole piece. My next favorite artwork is a statue called Why Turn Enslaved. It's a, a plaster statue of an anonymous black woman sold or being sold into slavery. While the identity of the woman remains unknown, evidence suggests she may have been enslaved in the Antilles in the Caribbean and later migrated to France after gaining her freedom. Although her personal story, voice, and name have been lost, the model quickly became the personified the personification of enslavement throughout the, the wide distribution of her image and continues to be viewed that way. I'm not really sure if it was meant to be this way, but it made me feel really uncomfortable seeing this in the same room surrounded by these giant statues of grandeur 
um, you know, from Western art. And I think the intention was meant to spark conversation, but it just made me feel very weird and small. Like, as a person of color, I had no space um, in this history. I know that they're planning on working to address the issue of racial equity moving forward. Um, while, and while they're going to be adding more pieces as time goes on, hopefully the future exhibit will have more artwork present. So the last artwork I loved was called The Pink Cloud. I like this piece more because of its artistic style, which highlights the beauty of the brightly colored sky. Henry Edmund Cross adopted this neo-impressionist technique called pointillism by applying small dots or dashes of pure color in 1891. So around 1896 um, is when he did this view of the cloud and he shifted towards larger, more emph emphatic brushstrokes often surrounded by areas of white to achieve greater color intensity. His daring use of pure abstract color and decorative design significantly influenced Henry Matisse and the French Fauves. This was happening around the Industrial Revolution, which photography was becoming available as an instant way of capturing events and people so that artists who painted realistic scenes were no longer as valuable. I wanted to try this style in future paintings because it really allows the artist to present their own unique perspective on a scene, rather than just trying to capture the beauty of a landscape in its most accurate detail. It draws a splash of creativity, which I think we all really need in our lives. So there you have it, folks. These are my five favorite artworks from the museum. Uh, I'd love to know in the comments below if you have any favorite paintings that you, or pieces of art that you really like. Um, yep. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe for more videos in the future.